Hi, I'm Michael Worst from Rural Solutions SA and we're here today filming at Glen Tilly's and we're looking at uh, the benefit of pregnancy scanning and how EID can be used to capture data from individual animals. So behind us we have uh, Cousins Merino Services who are actually scanning uh, animals for Glen Tilly at the moment. We are also going to explore ways that we can actually uh, use the, the data that we are co collecting today for Glenn to make management decisions to improve his flock and to achieve his goals for his enterprise. Our property here at Hillcrock Grove is uh, 780 hectares, approximately 10 kilometres southeast of Tarley. We do have a, um, uh, quite an area of hills grazing which is ideal for our sheep enterprise. There's about 400 hectares of it is arable uh, for cropping. Um, ourselves sow about 80 hectares of feed and hay and 80 hectares of grain. And then the balance is, uh, is sown by uh, people that are leasing our property. The sheep enterprise is a merino self-replacing flock. Uh, we've scaled that down too as we've uh, reduced our uh, business. And now we're running 720 merino ewes. The goals for our sheep, I guess we're, we're looking for a really true dual purpose merino. We're looking for high lambing percentages, high growth in our lambs, um, and we're still looking to maintain a good wool cut in that as well, an above average wool cut. So on our current figures, our sheep are um, producing 120% lambing, the user we share twice a year, the user cutting seven and a half kilos of wool of 19 and a half micron wool. Weather lambs at nine to 10 months of age grow out to uh, a 25 kilo carcass. So you know, it's a pretty productive package. You know, we're getting a good wool uh, return and a good um, a meat return out of our sale sheep. We've been pregnancy scanning for uh, about 15 years continuously. Uh, initially, we were looking just to remove the dry use. Uh, we found that we really didn't have a high number, probably 4% was about 4 to 5% maybe was a normal figure. So it really wasn't the, um, a big part of our scanning, but we realised that we needed to identify the twins and to manage those separately. Um, and so that's where our focus has been in recent years, is to be uh, scanning for the twins. Um, and in the last few years since we've done Lifetime U, we've um, really focused on the nutrition and so I, you know, we've lifted up the, um, the twinning percentage, probably used to be about 50% of our ewes were twins. We're now generally in that 60 to 65% of our ewes are uh, conceiving twins. Now, the pressure is on then, I guess we now know there's a lot of fetuses there. That's our challenge, is to be able to uh, get a, as much survival as possible. One of the issues we find, of course, is as you, you know what you've got, you also know what you're losing. And there's a, a lot of wastage and that's, you know, it's, it's a disappointing thing to have that wastage in your, in your business. Well, once, once we've got the, uh, uh, the singles and the twins allocated, well then we manage them separately. So obviously the, the twins will go into the best feed uh, situation. Uh, and in recent years that's been to go into confinement and be fed uh, pellets or uh, high, and high quality hay um, and really focusing on main, maintaining their condition. It's a, uh, we work very hard on uh, main, maintaining their condition. If we're really tight on feed, well perhaps the singles may have to go into containment on a, on a lesser ration, and, and it's based on uh, working out their, uh, their needs, their metabol uh, the N ME that they require, and uh, we, uh, we feed them the appropriate rations. Oh, having a higher percentage of lambs is a real bonus, it, it, um, and uh, the Merino U is quite capable, they, you know, it's quite possible to get good percentages out of Merino U's. So we now are able to class very heavily in our young ewes. Uh, last year we only retained 45% of our young ewes. Uh, that was all we needed as a replacement number. And so we had a lot more sales stock and that was a very good income raiser for us. Uh, and obviously you're, you're lifting the quality of your stock by um, classing hard on the, the genetic you know, the selection process. You can put a lot of pressure on those sheep and, and retain your very best sheep. Yeah, g'day, I'm Josh Cousins from Cousins Merino Services. We're a small agribusiness based out of Borough, South Australia. Um, 
We provide a number of services across the state and into the parts of Western New South Wales and Victoria. Um, one of our services is pregnancy scanning. So that's what we'll show you here today. So here we have, we're using um, the panel reader and the scale head to um, electronically what, record the information. Here today we have the Gallagher scale head, but we also use TrueTest. How it works is the sheep will come into the crate. There's a panel reader on the other side, which will recognise the electronic ear tag, which will come through, which will um, be recorded on the scale head, which is connected up to the IV scan, which is the ultrasound that we are using. From there, I'll be able to select if she has a single twin or if she's dry. So from there, that'll be imported straight into the Gallagher scale head. That'll be recorded for lifetime data and you can take that off of there at whatever point by either emailing it directly off your phone or by plugging a USB. Yep. So today we're using a panel reader hooked straight into the scale head, straight into the IV scan, which this is probably the quickest and best way of um, recording the data. But this only works uh, efficiently if every you or with a lot like most of you use have um, tags in them. If you have a, U, a, fit, like, a number of U's that don't have tags, um, the reader obviously will not read it. And when I press what is, uh, however number of lambs is inside the U, it'll change the U that's already um, been released. So it can um, vary your results a bit. So if there's only a number of U's that, um, that have an electronic tag in it, the best way is to use a stick reader. So you scan the tag and you have on the, set up on your reader to set it as a dry, single, or a multiple U. So here we're using an IV scan, which is just an ultrasound. Basic of an ultrasound is you have the probe, so the ultrasound will send sound waves out of the probe, and then we'll return the signal back into the probe. So this only works if you have connection on the skin. If you have any air in between the probe and the um, skin, it'll break the connection and you won't get that picture. That is why I'm just using some water here, which I'm spraying on with a, just a whale pump. So that way I can get that um, connection into the skin, and which will give you the picture up on the screen. So as the U comes into the cradle, the panel reader will recognise the radio, fre radio frequency on the ear tag. The scale head will recognise that, and I'll put the probe on the bare breech underneath the U there and I'll scan through, I'll see she only has one lamb in her. I'll press my counter, which will go straight into the scale head, and then I'll let her out. So, and so for market. So for today, we're only drafting one way, we're drafting the dries off. Um, at other places, you can draft three ways, which um, allows you not to mark them, but unfortunately, we haven't been able to set that up today. So he's coming in here, she's got twins, so when I'm scanning here, I'm either looking for two heads or two bodies. So she's got a head there, body there, head there, and another body there. So I'll take my chances that if you see two heads or two bodies, that that's going to be two lambs. Another one's come in there. She's got another set of twins in her. Nice set there and there. And you can see those circle donut looking things that are cotyledons. So that's what surrounds the fetus, and that's what all the blood vessels flow through. So. Generally, if you see a lot of um, cotyledons, you can tell it's going to be a healthy lamb. With the EOID tags, uh, you know, by recording that, we're then in a position where after uh, perhaps a th you know, two or three years, you're able to then say, well, these particular ewes are consistently producing twin lambs. Um, so we then are able to, uh, if we choose, to use those ewes, uh, you know, continue to use those ewes and, and uh, and uh, put aside the, the other use, we may sell them or, or whatever choice we have, but it certainly gives you the opportunity to, to make better utilisation of your better stock. I'd like to thank uh, Glenn and Josh for allowing us to, to come down and uh, for their technical input into today's video.